Well, this is sort of out of order for me, isn't it? I usually do the UFC fights first, and then I do my favorite albums after I've done the fight list. But in truth, not only did we have some fantastic music in 2019, but we also had some brutally exciting fights in MMA's biggest company. It was a good mix of new talent showing their stuff, and the old guard showing how good they can still be, and you'll see examples of both of those below in the list as we get on with it. Some honorable mentions, though, do go to Aspen Led vs. Jory Eubanks, Jorge Masvidal vs. Darren Till, and Donald Cerrone vs. Ali Quinta. No? Let's rumble. Number 10, Israel Adesanya vs. Anderson Silva. Let's go over what I said moments ago when we're talking about the old god mixing with the new talent. In this case, Anderson Silva representing the old, not like not like I'm trying to offend him or anything, and Israel Adesanya representing the new. But both represented the showmanship of what MMA can be in this fight alone. Adesanya and Silva took over the main event of UFC 234 after the original fight was scrapped due to Robert Whittaker's health issues, and both men had a lot to prove. With a shot at the interim middleweight title on the line, Anderson and Israel both left it all on the table, trading shot for shot and blow for blow in the entertaining way that only they could deliver on. A pure 25-minute clinic of fighting excellence. Number 9, Israel Adesanya vs. Kelvin Gastelum. And speaking of excellent clinics and interim titles, Israel would go back to back not just for two fights in a row, but on this list as well. Yay! I'll leave it up to you as to which fight is more, you know, as to which of those achievements is most prestigious. In this fight, he would battle the ultimate fight of season 17 winner Kelvin Gastelum, a young gun who was on a tear of his own in the UFC's talent rich middleweight division. Gastelum and Adesanya put on arguably a better bet than Israel's previous one, but both men absolutely delivered it, and considering the implications of what would follow after, this fight leaves more of an impact than you'd think. Once again, 25 minutes of fun, and nothing but respect between the two of them, which always makes me happy. I'm always a big proponent for respect in the UFC. We need more of it. This fight is a good example of that. Number 8. Dustin Poirier vs. Max Holloway. Let's stay on UFC 236, but skip ahead by a fight, shall we? Yes, UFC 236 was the only event in 2019 to have more than one fight to the night attached, but you can't say that the two men in the octagon didn't earn that. Two of the UFC's most dangerous and exciting lightweights looking to fill the gap that Conor McGregor left behind, they had some big shoes to fill, and goodness did they ever. Fights like this are perfect examples of what the lighter divisions can bring, and while Poirier would have his hand raised at the, as the new interim UFC lightweight champion, both he and Holloway look like go the solid gold here. Always great to see two unmatched masters have the fun and, that they did with this one, and I enjoyed it, so yeah, as, as did they, as they should have. Number 7, Yair Rodriguez vs. Jeremy Stevens 2. In September of 2019, everyone was hyped for the first fight between these two, but it ended in 15 seconds due to an accidental eye poke. A month later, they had the fight that fans were clamoring for, and even though they didn't have the main event spot this time, I feel like they deserved it. These two obviously had some unfinished business, and the trash talking that led up to what was an insane and bloody bout between the rising star and Rodriguez and resurgent badass in Stevens was, you know delivered on, basically. When you add those two elements, you get a 15-minute brawl full of surprising moments near finishes and close calls of plenty with no real dull moment between. I would say of all the fights on this list, this feels like the most wrestling matchist fight, but uh, it would be unfair to compare it to even that. It's still just brilliant. Number 6, Jessica Andrade vs. Rose Namajunas. As you people know, I don't like exciting fights that end prematurely due to something going awry. Looking at you, the Tony Ferguson sneeze of death, but luckily, this fight ended in such an entertaining way that I can't really complain. Women's strawweight champion Rose Namajunas went into UFC 237 with a lot to prove against rising star Jessica Andrade. After an exciting first round, Andrade managed to end it in the second one with a vicious but well-executed slam, landing Rose right on top of her bonds and finishing the fight to become the new champion. It's rare to see fights end in such a way, and it's rare still to see it in the women's divisions, but considering how good this fight was, I'm really not going to complain too much. It was a brilliant finish to what was a fantastic fight. Number 5, Mike Perry vs. Alex Oliveira. Mike Perry is one of the UFC's most outspoken personalities, and he has his detractors and his supporters in those cases, but you can't deny that he's one of the stone-cold best in the Octagon today. When someone like that is put in there with an equally exciting fighter like Alex Oliveira, you get, surprise surprise, an exciting fight. Platinum and Cowboy set out to put the hurt on each other, and despite the fact that both of them looked like they were blasted in the face by an army of angry tennis balls, the smiles that the two had at the end of the fight said it all. Perry won what was a close unanimous decision, but once again both men are justly proud of what they accomplished here, and I can't blame them. It was a brilliant fight, and they deserve to have their accolades. Number 4, Carla Esparza vs Alexa Grasso. Carla Esparza has had a fairly up and down uh, career in the UFC. She was their first ever women's strawweight champion, but she lost the title in her first defense. This fight with Alex Grasso was a tough challenge and a win that Carla needed. Not only did she get it, but she got it over a dangerous opponent in Alex Grasso. And 
she did it beautifully. This is easily one of the best fights of the year due to the amazing grappling credentials, but Alexa's stand-up game kept things interesting on the face. Carla didn't back down either way, and with such a big win as this, she could be well on her way to the top of the mountain again. With any luck, Alexa will be waiting for her too, and I'd love to see her rematch. Number 3, Kamara Usman vs Colby Covington. The most recent fight of 2019, one of the most acclaimed fights of the year, and yep, it's on my list too. Perennial bad guy Colby Covington had a shot at tough season 21 winner Karma Kamara Usman's worldwide title, and he fought like hell to get it too. Colby didn't back down for a moment, looking like a solid contender despite his typical attitude. It wasn't enough to save him as Usman retained via TK on the 5th and final round, but pretty much every minute leading up to that had one exciting moment. Filled with tons of great knockdowns, many close calls, a few accidental fails here and there, and a massive crowd support for Usman's victory. This deserves to be on many lists of 2019, and it's on mine too. What do you know? Number 2. Antonina Shevchenko vs. Lucia Pudlova. Last year, Lucia Pudlova grasped, uh, sorry, in 2018, Lucia Pudlova grasped, grasped my best of list with her fight against Irina Aldana. This year, she makes a return with a brilliant battle against Antonina Shevchenko, the older sister of equally dangerous Valentina Shevchenko. Despite the fact that this is Lucia's third loss in a row, it was again an entertaining fight that, like with the Nomunis vs. Andraj, ended in a way that you don't often see. The fight finished in round two with Shevchenko winning by technical submission, slapping a slick as hell rear naked choke where Lucia didn't tap, instead going to sleep. This fight was highly technical, brilliantly placed, and had a satisfying ending, and it was almost not my number one. Even though it isn't, it is still an absolutely brilliant, beautifully handled fight. Number one, Vicente Luque vs Mike Perry. Oh, man. Let's be honest, there was no way that this wasn't going to be my number one. Vicente Luque and Mike Perry are two of not just the UFC's best, but for my money, they're two of MMA's best full stop. Taking the co-main event spot in the UFC's first trip to Uruguay back in August, I had a good feeling that about this one when it was first announced. I'm glad that those feelings were vindicated. Both men can deliver in fights themselves, and Luque has had a great year in general, as well as a great career in the UFC. He's going to win the title soon, believe me. But this might be the best fight of either man's career. A thrilling edge of your seat battle with nothing but respect between both men. Also, Almost no dips in the action, and Luque taking a close split decision when I love everything about this fight, and hopefully you guys will too because you should definitely take the chance to go watch it. It is absolutely worth it, believe me. And that's it. That's my favourite UFC fights of 2019, and that will about do it for um, the top 10 lists for now. Uh, the next video I post will most likely be um, the new first episode of Season 5 for Backtracking. That's going to be good, and hopefully I'll be able to do some PBW stuff, but I don't know. It depends. Sort of up in the air at the moment, but whatever happens, happens. As always, thank you for watching. You're awesome. Bye-bye.